My name is Sean Kerwin and I'm a professor in the Division of Medicinal Chemistry here in the College of Pharmacy. You know, one of the great things about coming to pharmacy school at the University of Texas at Austin is that you can participate in cutting edge research in a wide range of fields with faculty here in the college as well as across campus in other colleges and schools. To facilitate this, we've developed two formal research programs here in the College of Pharmacy. The PharmD PhD program is a dual degree sequential program that allows students to team up one-on-one -on -one with a faculty mentor to conduct research during their PharmD degree and then to continue to become trained as a research professional in completing their PhD degree. Our honors program is for academically talented pharmacy students who would like to complete a thesis research project while they complete the PharmD degree. Our research interests and efforts are focused on genetic instability in cancer and other diseases and also studying mechanisms of DNA damage and repair and how those relate to genetic instability and disease etiology. And we think that's important because by better understanding the mechanisms of disease, then we can then begin to develop new and better strategies to treat and prevent such diseases. Okay, so originally when I came here, I started looking at these enzymes that were involved in the degradation of aromatic hydrocarbons, which were things like benzene and toluene and things like that. And so from there, we sort of, we've, we found this one enzyme and enzymes all evolve from, a lot of enzymes evolve from common ancestors. And so this one enzyme turned out to be everywhere in the biosynthetic, in the biosynthetic world. And so this was the one that led us to tomomycin. And tomomycin is an anti-cancer drug. And so we're working on the path, we're working on the enzymes that are involved in that pathway. Yeah, my research focuses on the utilization and costs or expenditures for for prescription medications and other healthcare services. And more specifically, I look at, um, in addition to expenditures, adherence, persistence, uh, switching patterns, augmentation patterns, and the factors that are related to those, to those uh, outcomes. My research involves the use of viruses as drug delivery devices. Viruses carry genetic material and they're very good at getting in cells and making the cells do what they want them to do. So we use them for gene therapy and for vaccine purposes. For example, we've discovered recently that DNA, the structure and the shape of the DNA helix can actually lead to genetic instability on its own in the absence of DNA damage. And this is really important because now we know DNA damage can lead to mutation and cancer and other diseases. But now we know that the DNA structure itself can cause damage to itself and lead to disease. With that in mind, now we have a new target for drug development. And so we can target now the DNA structure itself to prevent DNA damage from the structure and then design better pharmacological therapeutic intervention strategies to treat and prevent disease. Right now, we're looking at this biosynthetic pathway for the anti-cancer drug tomomycin. Um, and we're trying to figure out what enzymes are involved in that pathway so that we can make lots of the tomomycin so that people can study it. It's not available in very large quantities yet. And we want to make less toxic analogs of that uh, tomomycin. Well, I think that the outcomes of my research and similar research are, are important because clinicians could potentially use them if they're aware of factors that are associated with, with uh, problems with adherence or persistence or for people who are more prone to switching medications. Uh, they might be able to identify those patients in advance and then design treatment uh, regimens that are uh, appropriate for them. Um, and also expenditures are important, obviously. There's such an emphasis on on expenditure control, cost control these days. So factors that are related to high expenditures uh, could be controlled more easily. So that could be useful not only to clinicians, but also to uh, 
people who make decisions about benefit plans. My lab has been working for the last seven years on developing a vaccine against Ebola. And so we have just finished up and we're in the process of writing a manuscript and I actually have three PharmD students that are doing honors projects as part of this where we're looking at um, the safety of the vaccine. So again, will it cause any adverse reactions if it's given to a, a patient? and also the formulation aspect of it. And that's also what's very unique going back to pharmacy again. We've stabilized this vaccine in thin films that can be stored at room temperature and as a nasal vaccine that also can be stored at room temperature because as you probably can guess, dry ice and refrigeration isn't very common in areas where the outbreak is, is currently taking place. Aside from passing knowledge on to the next generation, which is very satisfying, I really enjoy the opportunity to interact with the um, energetic and enthusiastic students. It's so inspiring. So to have them come in and we talk to them about things we've been studying for years and we find it, you know, it's a little bit mainstream now. They're so enthusiastic and provide an energy that just makes all of us much more inspired to do our research. I really enjoy that. Yeah, I've, I've worked with several honors students and it's always been such a joy. Um, I, I like to be with them and it's it's very rewarding to see them uh, to see them grow and to learn and to be a part of their their academic and professional development that's that's just a very rewarding experience. What I like most about mentoring is allowing students the freedom to, to ask certain questions that perhaps they don't get to do in a classroom and following those um, lines of questioning and, and coming up with answers on their own. So again, you know, your, your, class, your classes allow you to do certain set experiments, you know, all your prerequisites and even through pharmacy school, do this, add this, and you'll get answer A, B, or C. But here you get the freedom to actually answer your own sorts of questions and follow those types of leads, which is exciting and a little bit scary all at the same time. <laughs> what do I enjoy most about mentoring? That's a tough one, because I enjoy everything about mentoring. <laughs> The PharmD students come in with a perspective from disease treatment, so it's actually a very good match. So by they provide to us sort of that disease relevance and patient-based research. And for them, we can then teach them what causes the disease so that they can then design and implement better strategies to treat and prevent such diseases. It's a very good mix, I think. They can bring their enthusiasm and their um, desire to learn more uh, and they can be proactive in their projects look for look for ways to to approach it to learn from it and, and I think they benefit more when they do that now what they can take away is uh, of course they're going to learn about the research process all the way from uh, developing research questions and hypotheses uh, to developing the research methods, including the statistical analysis, and writing the research report. So they learn kind of the technical aspects, but they also learn the, the bigger picture of what research is about and, and where it fits in, the benefits that it, that it uh, provides to, to society. Again, we're interested in using these viruses in gene therapy and, and for vaccine applications. And the field is full of very intelligent immunologists and molecular biologists and um, physicians. However, none of them have a really good grasp on how to formulate a preparation and to give it safely to a patient, and even monitoring patients after they're actually given these preparations. So that's really where my, my research and I think students at the College of Pharmacy participating in research can feel a much needed niche in a very up and coming area of research. They can realize, you know, that they have the potential of, of doing things in a research laboratory that can potentially impact not only how medicine is practiced in their own community, but also globally as well. And so students that work in my lab also get the opportunity of going to national scientific meetings to, to meet other scientists in the field and see that what they're doing is actually exciting 
and important. Research, sort of, you start with, you start in one area and that sort of leads to other things and then you sort of just follow those other angles and see what's interesting. Well, now that you've heard about some of the research opportunities here in the College of Pharmacy, I wanted to make sure that you know that we have informal research opportunities as well. We have research problems courses, and of course, if you're interested in research, you can talk to one of the faculty members about the research they do. They always like to talk about research. I don't think I'll wear these glasses the whole time. I <laughs> Check, one, two, three, check, check. <laughs> I guess I couldn't hold it. I was about to start laughing. <laughs> that seemed like forever. <laughs> That one was not good. <laughs>